Guys, it is a pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, I wish I could be there in person uh, like I have been in the past. I, I know this is an excellent conference, so hopefully you guys have had some very good presentations thus far. Uh, this presentation, which I will share now. Excellent. So this, this presentation is really meant to be a companion presentation to, to what you've seen, a more technical deep dive of the Zendu protocol uh, by Dr. Roman Olenikov earlier today. So this is, this is taking it basically bridging the, the technology to the product side uh, with some emphasis on the technology, but ultimately what are we going to do with the technology? Why is the technology important? Uh, and then ultimately how people can, you know, developers in particular, uh, can start getting some hands-on experience with it. Uh, so Horizon is uh, a project that I co-founded three years ago, back in 2017 as Zencash at the time. Um, and we've uh, since rebranded to Horizon. We bootstrapped the project uh, back then as uh, basic, basically with Zcash technology so that we could get really good and proficient with zero knowledge cryptography. And zero knowledge since, since then has become a, a really integral part of, of this new platform expansion that we've done going beyond uh, being a cryptocurrency. So this, this presentation called Real World Scalability of Blockchain with Sidechains uh, is now meant to really take you beyond or the next step on the technology and hopefully for the developers in the audience, uh, you'll find some very interesting, uh, you know, uh, things that you can start doing right now to join, join the fun. So this is a blockchain conference and I know the speakers for this conference always do such a good job talking about the importance of blockchain and what's going on. Just to reiterate that the market is exploding for blockchain. And I think that uh, often, it, and this is something that, uh, you know, we often have conversations of blockchain is not going to solve all of the world's problems but it for sure is a massively expanding market and almost every large firm out there and many you know, small and medium sized enterprises as well realize that there's something quite important going on in this industry uh, and they're starting to pay attention. So 88% of, uh, of CEOs for Fortune 500 com companies uh, say that they've actually taken blockchain projects from POC into some level of production and that's just growing, so that's huge. And you know, let's let's be realistic and, and understand that these are mainly proofs of concept. Uh, we're not really looking at major elements of infrastructure for most of the world's economy yet being built on blockchain, um, but for sure, big chunks of it will. So the revenues flowing into blockchain are, are absolutely exploding. Uh, you can see uh, big increases just year over year from 2019 to 2020, with a big notice that 2019 was really a bear market for our industry. And it's only been recently that we've seen a bit of an uptick on valuations. Uh, and it's been very concentrated in a particular area of the industry called DeFi, decentralized finance. But that said, there's still a lot of blockchain activity going on at the enterprise level and just businesses other than these decentralized finance applications starting to use the technology. And Horizon is building exactly the type of platform that we're, we think will be extremely useful for those that look at blockchain as a replacement or an augmentation to actual infrastructure for their business, uh, but also other things like, like decentralized financial applications, uh, but not really emphasizing that, really focusing more on the business applications and what you can do with real blockchain. So I, I don't need to belabor the point of why you would want to use blockchain, but we should think about it because there, blockchain is used as too much of a buzzword. And when you're deep diving on the technology, uh, all day, you don't like to see these misunderstandings of taking blockchain and trying to solve things for which blockchain really should not be a solution. Um, so let, let's focus on the things where blockchain is important and then we could talk about why, what we're building with Horizon and just in general, this blockchain of blockchains type of architecture is now exploding in the marketplace beyond Horizon as well. We're participating, but there are others. And you just heard about Polkadot, which is one of the, the, the other uh, projects in this space. But why would you use blockchain? So blockchain at its fundamental core, we're talking about peer-to-peer -peer replicated databases. And there's no reason to have peer-to-peer -peer replicated databases if all you're trying to do is have a database, right? So the very specific circumstances for which you would want blockchain are those for, where, for which you have multiple, like multi-parties, multi-stakeholders that are distributed, don't trust each other, maybe are over different regions, maybe haven't ever coordinated together in the past and don't necessarily have a natural point of coordination. So if you're trying to bring many stakeholders uh, from outside of your organization to cooperate on a common platform and one where you don't have to rely on or trust a particular member of that coalition, where you can have rules of the game that everyone can monitor and adhere to to participate, that is blockchain. That is the quintessential use case for blockchain. It alleviates trust issue. 
It solves for immutability or making sure that information isn't tampered with by, by certain actors within a, a shared environment. It provides transparency, which is absolutely critical in the modern information age. And by the way, with Verizon and applications of zero knowledge cryptography, you can have trust and transparency that's selective. And you can actually have information that's under the hood that you don't necessarily disclose, um, but you can still publish it to a blockchain, apply some zero knowledge cryptography and some proofs and actually that validate to the world that the information is correct and accurate. It plays by the rules of the game. And when you're in an environment like probably the, the bulk of the, the current crypto uh, cryptocurrency blockchain on the public side is really focusing on tokens, ownership, transfer of these, uh, these you know, tokens, whether they're non-fungible, whether they're fungible, uh, whether they're coming from the old ICO world to you know, the modern STO world, or if they're just representing certain uh, you know, things like a, a, a play cap in, in a crypto case. What's important now is to realize that uh, blockchains in their original form, say the v, v, V0, V1, V2 blockchain uh, protocols that are on the market, uh, were not really built for the type of scalability that we're talking if we're going to the enterprise marketplace or getting significant parts of infrastructure to start using blockchain. So there is a big scalability issue, and this is where you have projects like Cosmos, Polkadot, and Horizon trying to solve scalability in a blockchain of blockchains framework. And here's what I mean by that, is we've just released a protocol called Zendu. Uh, Zendu is our version of a scalability protocol. It's basically a communication protocol between blockchains. So we envision an architecture that scales is one that doesn't try to have one blockchain that does everything, but has a blockchain of blockchains environment that has, say, a central point of validation or truth, but is completely de decentralized in its implementation, decentralized in its rule set, decentralized in its, art, its infrastructure, and importantly, completely permissionless in the sense that anyone can start building on the application layer without having to uh, focus on the, the, under, the underlying blockchain elements in terms of consensus, network layer, and so forth. So our solution then do is something we've built totally from scratch and just released uh, let, let's be uh, very clear. We released a beta version of Zendu, in, in, in particular the Zendu SDK, in July of this year. So we're, we're now two months from delivering to the market a beta version of our, our core technology now, taking Horizon from being prior to this a cryptocurrency with strong privacy to now being a privacy preserving blockchain and blockchains platform. Um, so you can think of Cosmos and Polkadot but with zero knowledge cryptography for data privacy. Uh, this is all original work we've built from scratch with, uh, you just to show you the order of magnitude of, of just the beta, and the beta is probably 80% of the real solution that we're working on to deliver uh, over the next year. Uh, it's about 114,000 lines of code across over 1,100 software files. It's a beast, and it contains three cryptographic libraries. The most important is a generalizable library called Gingerlib. So if you guys are SNARK uh, fans out there, so uh, zero knowledge uh, proof fans, you, you can have a lot of fun by looking at uh, Gingerlib. Gingerlib is a fork from Zexy, which is a, a library developed by Coda. And we've stripped out anything that's project specific. We've completely generalized it. And we've added new hash functions and new, new things to do in particular uh, with, with um, proof recursion. So it's a very interesting library that's generalizable. That it's at the core of the Zendu protocol. So if you're an application developer and you want privacy for your applications and native privacy that's already built in, you don't have to think about another layer of privacy. You can actually have privacy indulgence to your system with Gingerlib. It solves some of the biggest problems in blockchain. And again, this goes to the class of projects for which Horizon just entered. And this is the Cosmos, the Polkadot, and now the Horizon class of projects that are really working on these Side chains, or say side chains as a service or, or blockchains as a service, but through a side chain interoperability protocol, that's what we do. So we, we solve in a big way for scalability and flexibility because the Zendu protocol um, does not require you to code anything in, in the core blockchain, the Horizon blockchain. All you have to do is abide by the rules of the interoperability protocol called Zendu. And then you can focus specifically in your application logic. And once you're on blockchain, we provide a reference implementation. Um, it's called Lattice, which is a proof of stake implementation built on the IOHK's ScoreX framework, uh, built from Scala with Java wrappers. So it, it's accessible to vast majority of developers that have uh, skill and experience with Java, who can now easily deploy, and I say easily in quotations, because we're looking at a beta version of our product, but easily 
deploy a blockchain using our SDK, and you can fo start focusing on what we call data boxes, which are customizable, essentially customizable lo logic objects. So you can add your own logic, add your own objects, and add your own application layer to the SDK. And it, we abstract away all of the complexity it, in a very similar way, like I said, to Cosmos and Polkadot, abstract away the complexity of running a blockchain, worrying about consensus, and um, dealing with network layer, uh, security, and so forth. Um, so it's a very attractive SDK for developers that now want full control over their own blockchain, rather than the other model, and I'll talk about this in, in a little bit, of joining a, a very robust ecosystem like Ethereum as an example that is very mature and developed and has a lot of developer participation, but you are as a developer focusing specifically on your smart contract or your application, and you have no control over the underlying mechanics of how the blockchain operates. So if there, if there ever comes, and the, the day will come where there will be a hard fork to the underlying protocol, you have zero control over that. Um, and if, if it does adversely impact your application, uh, let's just say you're screwed. You really have no recourse. Uh, so our system is designed to give developers and businesses their own blockchain. It's interoperable with a broader, a broader framework of blockchains, a broader ecosystem, but they retain complete control over consensus and networking. And there, can be, there, are no, there will be no changes in the Horizon main chain protocol that would impact adversely your applications or your blockchain. So this is the big intellectual difference or architectural difference between models. We're very happy to have the beta version uh, go out in July. And now it's really just a race to build the infrastructure. And I hope that I can give you guys good reasons for joining this uh, because we're, we're starting from scratch on building an ecosystem and we, we need a lot of help from developers. And I think it's a really fun environment with great opportunities to join. So in general, the three things that I want to stress here that are really important for developers and then for businesses or software companies that build is that the logic in the protocol itself is fully generalizable in the sense that there are no application constraints on what you can do with your blockchains. So you're, you are not constrained to a particular architecture. You're not constrained to a particular protocol. We use, you know, with the reference implementation that I mentioned called Lattice, we, we use a peer-reviewed, academically robust uh, implementation um, called Ouroboros Prowse that IOHK pioneered and, and brought uh, open source. We took that and we made it uh, um, ability to interoperate it in a blockchain, a blockchain's environment, and be interoperable with another chain. And then we release that with our SDK. So you're starting with a very uh, academically rigorous proof of stake framework, and then you focus on your application logic, and you could do anything with it. There is nothing, th there are no artificial constraints to the types of applications you can build with it. And you have a complete SDK that allows you to abstract away everything else to make it easier for developers. It's completely decentralized, at least in the full implementation that we're going for next year. The implementation that is in the beta right now has an M of N uh, proving system. So basically the developer will declare a set M of people that can write certificates to validate transactions from the side chain back to the main chain. And as long as a set N and a subset M uh, sign off uh, on the validity of the, of the certificate, then, then it's accepted by the main chain. So it, I would call this a semi-centralized in the sense that you could have your own private blockchain for which you don't share the, the source code with anyone and you run it, your private coalition, like if you're a bank and you wanna you know, launch a banking coalition uh, blockchain network, you can do that and you don't have to share any information with, with the rest of the world. Or if you wanna participate in the public blockchain world, you can have a public blockchain that you launch and you just designate a set N of certifiers and as long as the subset N of them certified, you're good to go. What's really interesting about our protocol and what Dr. Olenikov uh, talked about in his presentation was the snark implementation for how we use zero knowledge cryptographic circuits to create a proving system that removes humans from the loop. So you don't have to declare any human beings to be certifiers of the system. You actually write a, a snark circuit and we provide this for you uh, with the lattice implementation. And as long as the rules of the snark circuit or the rules of, of the system are abided by, then uh, block blocks certificates are valid and uh, accepted by the main chain. So it's a really nice way of creating a totally decentralized uh, yeah, blockchain and blockchain ecosystem where we remove any trust by trusted certifiers. And that's the really important thing. The third really important thing for developers and businesses is you have to think about how you're going to participate in an economically advantageous way. And what we provide is an endogenous, and by this I mean a built-in uh, revenue mechanism for developers 
uh, the skills with usage. So what we do is we, we allow developers to declare the percentage of transaction revenue from the side chains that will be uh, captured by the developer as a revenue for launching the blockchain. So this is a very attractive way for new developers to launch, say, an important Oracle application in the Horizon ecosystem and actually capture a percentage of transaction reviews every time that Oracle is called upon. Maybe you want to launch a DEX, a decentralized exchange in the Horizon ecosystem, and you want to capture a percentage of transaction fees for every transaction, every trade that's happened on your DEX. And the, the list can go on for gaming applications, supply chain applications, anything you can think of as an application developer. And now you have an endogenous way to capture revenue, which is absolutely critical because you have to think long-term sustainability of your ecosystem requires developers to be compensated for their work. And this is not something that is natively built into Bitcoin, Ethereum, or really any other implementation out there. A blockchain, this is something that we view absolutely critical and passionate about, and which is why Zendu was launched with this capability. Okay, I know I'm running out on time here, guys, so I'm going to quickly go through some other slides. We have open sourced uh, a version of VSDK, so you can go to our GitHub and you can view the open source version of VSDK. We do have uh, multiple companies in our ecosystem, which is uh, built for efficiency and also raising capital. Another company is called Horizon Labs, which is launching its own SDK. It is more commercial grade, but right now we have an open source SDK on the, the Horizon uh, you know, public GitHub. Now this is just, I have two slides just to show a quick comparison of the difference because as developers, you have to think about very carefully what ecosystem you're gonna build on. Now the Horizon platform ecosystem here is brand new. So there are a ton of opportunities out there. If you wanna be the first to launch, say stable coins, the DAX, Oracle systems and so forth, basically the opportunity is to replicate anything that exists in other public blockchains that are useful. And in particular, I would encourage people to focus on the most useful applications that are driving the most transaction volume around the world right now and replicate them and build them in the Horizon ecosystem. So here's an example of why we're different because we, we have our, our core architecture as being a blockchain and blockchains environment versus one blockchain that does everything. So Ethereum takes the opposite approach, which is fantastic and serves many use cases and it built one of the most, uh, truly the most robust ecosystem around Ethereum. It's a powerhouse and I have huge respect for it. But what it does is one blockchain that does everything in the sense that it's a turn and complete scripting language with a VM that executes smart contracts like a, a world computer and everything is done on the same world computer, which has, as we, we now know, uh, scaling issues on the economic side, scaling issues on the technical side, really the technical side driving the economic side in the sense that now it's become increasingly expensive to run applications on Ethereum because it's so successful. So this is not anything against Ethereum. This is a success story where they're so successful, but their architecture, at least in current version, has one blockchain that does everything, and therefore every application is competing for the same bandwidth, and every application has to compete with fees. And that's why they're escalating significantly. In our system, that's not the case at all because you would have your own blockchain, and your blockchain is function specific if you want to, and all of the activity happens on your chain. Fees can stay constant, if not decline over time. And you know, this is a choice by the developer. And this now feeds back into a broader blockchain of blockchains environment where the fees do not scale with usage. In fact, because we do things in parallel, um, you know, and, and we'll see where things go, but at least initially that the, the theory and the, you know, the empirics show that fees are not going to be scaling in the same way. And this is just a, a quick visual of what I just said. We, we now have an architecture that allows you, the developer or business to launch your own chain which you own, you have complete control over versus participating where you, you own a smart contract on a, an underlying protocol for which you have no control. Uh, Horizon Labs is the commercial uh, accelerating company that I mentioned, uh, but for full disclosure, guys, I am also the CEO of Horizon Labs, um, you know, co-founder of Horizon, CEO of Horizon Labs. And what we do is we offer commercial solutions. So if you're a business and you're looking at a business application, you should probably talk to Horizon Labs if you want to get in here because we can help accelerate your your blockchain development by using our, our more commercial grade SDK. The monetization model is, as I've already said, you participate in transaction revenues, which can be fantastic and an amazing hockey stick-like revenue scale, which in the startup world, we're all dreaming of hockey stick-like revenues. If, if your applications or your, the blockchain infrastructure that you launch with our system scale massively, you as the developer or you as the company should participate in that. We have exactly the solution for that, where you get to declare the percentage of transaction fees that go to you. So it's an extremely attractive model that everyone in the space should take a look at. 
Why build on Horizon? There are a variety of reasons, but what I can say now, it's the, it's the wild west in the sense that there's massive opportunity because we've just launched this unique, massively scalable protocol that allows for direct revenue shares with developers or businesses, and it's built on the largest blockchain network in the, in the world. So that's a fact that I didn't mention before, but we have uh, almost 40,000 full nodes running our, on our network. These are registered high power full nodes where we enforce uh, hardware standards and computational standards by the network. And this significant, or I would say massively collapses the marginal cost of, of infrastructure in our network. So if you participate, you're getting massive economies of scale. Um, your, your applications will not scale in cost as they become successful if they do on other blockchain projects. Because we use best in class cryptography, I mentioned uh, Ginger Lib, and then also this recursive SNARK proving system uh, for um, sidechain uh, transaction validity back to the main chain. It, it is something that has best in class security, easy deployment with our SDK, and a revenue sharing model for developers is absolutely critical for scalability and long term sustainability of these blockchain ecosystems. So, guys, please, if any of this is interesting, the, the, the ecosystem is really starting from scratch. We've been around for three years as a project, so we've definitely proven ourselves in terms of community building, but now we have you know, two months worth of beta of our product on market, and we're racing to now get the production level version of it, but the opportunities are truly endless. So there's, there are very successful uh, other competitive ecosystems out there, like I mentioned, from Ethereum to Cosmos to Polkadot, uh, that have gone through the same growing pains that we are now entering, and there's massive opportunity to come in at the ground floor today as a developer or as an entrepreneur to start basically porting over the same type of infrastructure, whether it's Oracle systems, DEXs, smart contract types, classes. You can create a tokenization platform that literally just mimics the ERC standards for Ethereum. The, the opportunities are really endless, boundless, as we like to say by design. So come in, participate. We have an early access program called HEAT, the Horizon Early Adopter Program, where you have the early access to our technology, to all of the updates and direct access to our, our development team. You can earn bounties directly by participating in our open source repositories. So click, click on the QR code in the middle there if you want to earn bounties today. We have a whole bunch of uh, tasks open and we're going to be adding to them significantly and actually building an incentive system into our, our uh, bounty program so that you can actually earn earn bounties by getting other people to complete bounties. So it's actually a really nice scalable viral way to get development done in the community context. And guys, also just join us in Discord for the technical conversation and community conversation is critical for ecosystem building. And with that, guys, that's all I have. I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you for your time. And I wish I could be there in person. This is always an amazing conference next year. Thank you very much, Robert. I also hope that the next time we meet, it will be an offline event. Uh, and uh, you're doing great things. We have some of your fans in the chat who are rooting for your project. Uh, and actually, we have a couple of questions from the chat. Awesome. Um, we, the first question is from Nick Dean. Uh, he says, I am interested why your solution is better than other side chains. Why should we build on it? Is it easier to develop faster? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So I would say different is the right word. So not, not necessarily better because I, I don't want to denigrate other projects that are out there because they are fantastic. Cosmos and Polkadot are two close, most closely aligned competitors and they're doing a fantastic job. Our system's different. We go for a high security with decentralization on SNARK. So basically recursive SNARKs is at the core of our technology, which you know it, it may not look like, I mean, it, from a technology and, and say the like R&D perspective, it, it's massively fascinating. And our, our scientific team is so excited to deliver this to the market. But I think the market will realize, say a year from now, and beyond how important this is. Because rather than you know the early sidechain models that are out there, if you wanted to build some new functionality, some sidechain that does something unique, you had to hard code this in some way into the core protocol. And getting core, a group of core developers to care about what you're doing enough to modify their core architecture for your, your application was not gonna happen. So then you had the evolution of say like the next generation, which is where we are now with Cosmos and Polkadot, like I said, fantastic programs. Ours now goes a step further with built-in privacy. So if privacy and say like application and data privacy for users is a core aspect of what you want to deploy to market, uh, as it should be, by the way, since data, the, the economic value of data is skyrocketing these days and users now are starting to get pissed off with the old tech giants that are you know, basically uh, that, that Faustian bargain of 
taking your data and monetizing your data in, in exchange for using your free platform. Nothing's free in life, right? You're actually giving them enormous economic value. There's a massive multi-trillion dollar market out there for entrepreneurs and developers to tap into where you give your users application data privacy, let your users control their own data, let them monetize their own data, and your applications will go viral and explode. This is my prediction, and this is where we really come to the market as a unique differentiator, is zero knowledge cryptography is at the core of what we do, at the core of our SDK, and if that's important to you, we have an excellent solution for you, and that's why you should consider Zendu. And also, guys, the last thing that I, I keep harping on is for sustainability, you have to give developers a, a direct revenue model. This is something that hasn't happened before in the early days of the dot-com days to the modern big tech platform days to even like the early blockchain days. Developers are never given a direct revenue model. We're giving them a direct revenue model, and this is something that's going to explode. Thanks, thanks, Robert. And we have the second question also from Nick. Uh, he's saying, I like developers earning fees. Can we split the fee be, uh, between developers and let's say other stakeholders of the project? Absolutely, it, and that's actually what we do with our core blockchain. So what differentiated us early on was we, we carved out a, a different group of stakeholders than you typically get in a public blockchain because we recognize that to build a public blockchain ecosystem, there are many valuable contributions that, that even go beyond developers. So first of all, developers must be compensated, but then there are many other people that go to build the success of your ecosystem. And you should, to be sustainable, the, the math equation is on the margin. So mar marginal contribution needs to be matched with marginal benefit, right? This, this is a, the economics 101 of creating sustainability. And this is exactly what we did on our main chain. What we're doing with the Zendu protocol and carving this out for developers, now developers have the unique choice of being able to split this further at their discretion. And this is the key, it's at their discretion. So if you're a business or a developer, you can choose, hey, maybe someone that does evangelism for your change is really important. Maybe a marketing company is really important. Maybe in another investor group to, to get them to give you an investment, you can actually sign a contract with them that gives them a percentage of the transaction revenue. This is another way that maybe crowdfunding can be done in the future. So it opens up a, a massive source of new opportunities that did not exist in blockchain before. Great, thank you, Robert. Uh, that's all questions we have for today. Thank you again for taking your time to participate and for your presentation. Truly my so, pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. This was a pleasure. And, and like I said, next year, I hope to be doing this in person. <laughs>